Good day to everybody. It is July 3rd, and today we are looking at Psalms 103 through 105. 100, Psalm 103, this is a psalm that combines praise and thanksgiving and instruction. Um, there's, it begins with the imperative to bless. Bless the Lord. Uh, bless the Lord, my soul. Oh, my soul. And here soul doesn't mean uh, that, uh, that inner disembodied spiritual thing uh, that uh, we think goes to heaven when we die. That, that's a Western Platonic concept that's not in the Bible. Soul here in the, the word for soul in Hebrew refers to very essence, very being. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord with everything I have and everything I am, um, all of me, so to speak. Um, and why should we praise God? The psalmist says, because of all of God's benefits. To know God is also to know God's benefits. And in doing, in doing, in knowing God's benefits, we can then seek to make God known to others. Um, the psalmist testifies that that God has forgiven and healed and redeemed, even from uh, being close to death, given long life and renewed. Um, we see in the latter part of the psalm, the uh, God's benefits are uh, the benefits are widened, broadened, if you will, uh, to include all who are oppressed. The benefits uh, that we receive from God is the gift of the law acts of compassion, and especially God's very gracious forgiveness. So the uh, psalm ends as it begins to bless the Lord, and uh, the hosts of heaven join in with the psalmist's soul in praise for God and God's benefits. Psalm 104, very much like Psalm 103, almost uh, in some ways you almost feel like you're looking into a mirror of Psalm 103. Both begin and end with this kind of exhortation of bless the Lord, O my soul. Uh, but where Psalm 103 um, praises uh, God for the wonderful acts of uh, salvation, here the psalmist in 104 praises God for the magnificent acts of creation. So you get uh, a, a, a similar description uh, to Genesis 1 in creation. First, the heavens are created, and then the earth and sea, and then animals and plants and people. Um, the order is not exactly the same. In Genesis 1, it can be argued that uh, the crescendo of, of the seven, six days of creation crescendos in the Sabbath, um, and that is lacking here, and also the creation of human beings in God's image is also lacking, and, and creation itself is reflecting the image of God. Uh, Psalm 104 is metaphorical in its language, um, language about God, descriptions of God, descriptions of God is stretching out, writing, setting, building, rebuking, and then you get these uh, what we call mythological aspects, and that is uh, references to the chaos that God brings order out of chaos. Uh, chaos is often a theme we see in the Psalms along with creation and that God brings that order. And also this mythological beast, the Leviathan, which some think is either a reference to a whale or a crocodile. Creation in Psalm 104 is an ongoing uh, as well as a one-time event. Creation functions orderly according to laws, according to rhythms, and God, but God still is present with creation, uh, guiding and guiding creation. And, and so uh, both are seen here. And that leads to praise. Praise God for God's creation and God's continued involvement with creation. All right, Psalm 105. This is uh, one of three lengthy psalms, lengthy historical psalms, I should say, 
Uh, the, we saw the first one in Psalm 78. We'll see the, the third Psalm, the third historical Psalm in 106 uh, tomorrow. We'll begin with that. Um, the center of this song's proclamation is that throughout the people, about the, the people's history, God has kept the promises. He's kept the promises he's made with their ancestors, with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, the psalm describes the history of Israel as the history of God's faithfulness to the promises God made to Abraham. How do you know, you might ask an ancient Hebrew, how do you know God is, your God is faithful to the promises? Well, just look at our history, uh, the person would respond. Our whole history is an example of God being faithful to the promise he made to Abraham. Uh, the psalm narrates that history demonstrating obviously his belief that God is actively involved because we have phrases like wonderful works and miracles and judgments suggesting that God is not aloof in a way but God is intimately involved in history. Uh, promise is one of the key terms in the psalm and uh, various English translations uh, will uh, render this differently. Promise, word, what God has said, but it all points to the fact, however it is translated, that God does what God says God's going to do. Um, the uh, psalm spends most of its time on the historical narration of, of Israel's early period. Uh, you get Joseph's slavery in Egypt, the Exodus events, God's guidance and his provisions in the wilderness of Sinai, and the gift of the promised land. Uh, this history is probably a sung history. This is one of the psalms that was probably likely sung. You sing these songs, why? So that new generations will come to know God through the psalmist's praise. We come to know the story of what God has done for our people as we sing the story in worship. It also gives the people a way to participate in God's covenant and to obey the law of God in worship. All right, that's uh, our Psalms for today. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for the gift of this day. Thank you that we can sing our praises to you in worship. We thank you for your presence with us throughout our time and our history that you have uh, you have guided and directed us. You continue to be with us, just like you were with your people of old, continuing to keep your promises, even into this day and time in the 21st century. Thank you for that. Help us to live this day in the confidence of your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, friends, tomorrow, another daily devotion.